Hey friend, in this video we're going to be talking about app performance and how to take your slow app and make it run lots faster. A lot of the times when I'm helping other app makers during my trainings, I see that their apps are really not working super well, they're really slow and, and clunky as we like to say, right? So these are some of my favorite tips to implement that you can implement really pretty easily and you'll see a, uh, a big improvement with any of your current apps and if you apply some of these concepts to your future apps they will run much better. So with that said let's do the first tip and it is to use the concurrent function. I switch over to my desktop here. I have a button in Power Apps that is do lots of stuff right and so this could be you know this is representing a button or it could be Maybe it's the on start property or the on visible property um, or something like that. Anywhere where you're doing lots of things, right? You can, you can use the concurrent function to, instead of having those formulas run one at a time, they'll actually run um, all, at, all at the same time, right? So if I go up here and look at our little formula here, if we select this button, how Power Apps normally works is it's gonna run one formula, it's gonna run this one, then it's going to run this one, and then it's going to run this one, right? And that, lots of times, that's just totally fine. But when you have lots of things going on, that really can slow your app down. And all we're going to do here is we're going to say concurrent, go to the end. And how I really do this is I just put all of my formulas inside of the concurrent function. So I'll just close the parentheses right here. And now normally we separate our different formulas with a semicolon. And whenever you put the formulas in the concurrent function, instead I'm just going to use a comma. So do a comma right here, comma right here, and awesome. So now I'll format this a little bit here. So all of these formulas are now going to run at the same time. The only thing to really think about here with this is if you have... Uh, if you're setting one variable or doing something and then um, you're, you're setting another variable or creating a collection or whatever it is that depends on another formula inside of the concurrent function, it's not really going to work, right? So sometimes if this variable needs something from this variable, I'll just put this variable outside of the concurrent function like that. Add a little semicolon, delete our little comma there. One of this again. And so that's what you have to do sometimes is say, hey, I'm going to set a variable and then I'm going to have all these things run at the same time, right? Just in case this variable, um, you know, this variable needed something from this variable or something like that, if that makes sense. And so this concurrent function, what I like to do, honestly, is I like to just build my app without thinking about it too much. And then I do a run through after I'm ready to really test my app or give it to a client or something like that, what I'll do is I'll say, okay, let me go through my whole app and let me see where can I put the concurrent function to have it run multiple formulas at the same time, right? Because what can happen is you start to use a concurrent function and then you keep building your app and adding more things and more things, right? And it can kind of, you can accidentally mess things up. And so I like to just kind of do it near the end. That makes it a little bit more smooth. So with that said, um, let's get into number two, which is, let me look at my notes here so I can remember all these tips, is reducing the amount of controls. So I'll just go to me here real quick. You can look at my beautiful face. <laughs> um, so with this tip, I can't really show you much. So that's why you're just looking at me. But uh, with this tip, we're going to, the idea is to reduce amount, the amount of controls on your screen kind of obvious, but something that is helpful with this is to have it in mind when you're building things to say how, if I, if I need to do a certain thing, how can I do it in as few controls as possible, right? So I, what I see a lot of people do is they'll add a bunch of different icons, like multiple labels when they're doing a form and all these different things, right? And they're just, there's like so many controls. And so if you can reduce it in some way, that can be super helpful. Uh, one of the ways to do it, now I'll go back to my screen here, is to use a gallery. Because if I had a menu, so let's just take our button here and copy it a few times. If I had a menu and this was, you know, maybe this is over here. Um, these controls are over here. Oh my goodness. There we go. 
All right, these controls are over here. It's my little menu, looks awful. But uh, the idea here is I have three controls, right? For my menu, I have, this goes to the home screen, this is another screen, and this is another screen. So this is three controls right here. So what I could do instead is if I have a repeat, repeating controls like this, I can actually instead use a gallery. I can say, hey, I wanna do a vertical gallery. We'll do a different gallery, actually. Let's do the blank gallery. There we go. And now I have my blank gallery and I'll move it over here. And this is one control, right? But if I put in a button inside of it, all of a sudden I've got four buttons, but really this only counts as two because I have a gallery as a control and then I have one button inside of the gallery. So that counts as two. But you see, I get four buttons. So it's like four for the price of two. <laughs> um, and so if you have repeating buttons or repeating uh, uh, different repeating sections like that um, uh, with, with galleries, you can really help speed up the app by reducing the amount of controls in that way. Can't do it everywhere, right? But that can be a really helpful thing. Uh, the third tip is actually called explicit using the explicit column selection for SharePoint Online. So if you are using SharePoint, here's like the easiest tip out of all these. And it is to go up here to settings and I'll, I'll turn it on and then I'll explain it. So you'll go to settings, then updates, and we'll start, start typing in explicit. And right here you can say it says, see it says, reduces the size of SharePoint queries and improves performance. That's exactly what we wanna do. So I'll turn this on and basically what this does is every time we make a data call or, or our app makes a data call to SharePoint, SharePoint often brings back a bunch of extra stuff that we really just don't need. And so this helps um, those data calls be much, have much less in them, right? So that the app is saying, hey, go get me some information from SharePoint and SharePoint's bringing back only the things you actually need. And that can really help improve performance as well, especially if you're getting lots of data from SharePoint. I've turned this on to some of my older apps that are connected to SharePoint and it does make a difference. And the idea here with all of these tips, honestly, is you, you might notice a little bit of, of um, performance improvement with, with implementing one or a couple of these tips. But what I found is if you implement all of these tips and even more that I'll share in another video, then it, it makes your apps run really well. You can have apps that are like, they're doing a lot, right? But they run so smooth because you've set it up in such a good way. Okay, for our second to last tip, that is reduce the amount of media you're using in your app. If you have like videos or a lot of different images for icons or for um, background images and all these things, right? that can slow your app down a ton as well. So what I like to do is maybe have a couple different images if, if, um, if, I'm, if I really need to use them. And I put them maybe in, in the header on top of my app. Um, let me switch over to the desktop. I'll put them in the, the header in on the top of my app or maybe it's a background image perhaps or something like that. But I really try to limit how many I'm using. And if I do use images or media of any, kind. Uh, I'll, I'll just make sure that the file size is a good size and it's not some giant media file, right? That can slow things down, especially on like mobile apps. Um, if you're using a power app for mobile devices, it can slow it down a good bit. Uh, some alternatives that you can do is to use SVGs and start to use those different icons and, and images with SVGs or work a little bit better. Um, I will do a separate video on using SVGs inside of Power Apps because they are very nice and if you do need to use them, that's a great way to go. Um, and you don't actually have to like load in a bunch of media into your app. So that, that's a really helpful thing. So for the final tip here, it is one of my favorite tips to, that, I've, that I've ever learned, I think. And it is don't reference controls from another screen. So the perfect example that I see all the time when I'm helping new app makers is, let's delete our little buttons here real quick. 
So one of the things that I see people do is I have a gallery here and it's just pointing to a SharePoint list called vendors. And when I hold down the alt key and click edit, it's all it's going to do is take me to another screen where I have a form to edit this item that I've selected, right? So I'll click edit. And here's my form. I'm now on the form screen. I was just on the gallery screen. And if I click on my form here, if you're familiar with forms, forms have this property called item. And I'll click on this guy right here. And I'm referencing when I want to know what item am I editing in my form, I'm referencing gallery one dot selected. And this gallery, you can see is on this screen and I am on the form screen and gallery one is on gallery screen, right? So I'm actually, whenever an app is referencing a control on another screen, like it is now, it slows things down because it kind of has to keep this other screen in memory. It kind of has to still know about that other screen and these other controls on that other screen. And so that can really slow things down. And this is probably one of the most common times that I see it, right? When it is your, you have a form or you're, you're just saying, hey, that the user selected something and then I need to know what they've selected and now I'm on a different screen, right? And so you use the, the selected item in the gallery just like this. And a better way to do it that is better for a lot of different reasons, but the main one we're talking about today is performance is if I go to the gallery screen, I click on our little edit button in our gallery right here. What I can do is I can actually set a variable right here that says set VAR vendor to this item. Essentially, that's setting a variable to the selected item. So whatever item this user selected, a variable is gonna be set to that item. It's called VAR vendor. So when I click the edit button, I've set that variable to that selected item. And now I come to the form here. And for the item property, instead of referencing this control on another screen, I can send, instead just say VAR vendor. And now you can see it's pulled in that same title field, right? That's the only field in here. Um, and I'm it's doing the same thing, right? So when I click save and when I'm editing this, it's gonna do, it's gonna, edit that item, make changes to that item and everything, everything's going to work really well. Uh, the really helpful part about this on top of improving performance is when you need to get to the same form from multiple different places and you don't know if they've selected gallery one or gallery two, right? Lots of different weird things. This can be super helpful. Uh, and with that, these are all of my want some of my favorite tips for improving performance. So if you um, need help improving your app, if you have a question, let me know in the comments. And I am going to do a, another part to this video. There's lots of other little tips I'd like to share. So let me know if this was helpful, if you have any questions, and check out my uh, website, peakpowerapps.com, that I'll put in the description as well to learn a little bit more about what I do and how I help people. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.